Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel today. Following a different kind of post that I wrote some time ago on the blog, I'm also doing a different kind of video for the YouTube channel. So, in this video I will talk a little bit about me and how I got into fountain pens. Uh, I hope you, can, you like this kind of video. Uh, I will not show you how pens uh, write or anything, I'll just talk about the, how I got into this area. Um, if you like this and you want to see more type of videos like this, please tell me something on the comment section below and I'll try to do it. So, here I go. I think this m makes sense to do this now because uh, the blog is almost eight years old and now it's time to, to do this. So, I never introduced myself here on YouTube. Um, I just started posting videos about pens and I think it's about time to do it. Uh, so, my name is Paulo and I am from Portugal, that small country on the western side of Europe. And the rest you already know. I'm addicted to fountain pens, uh, more to some brands than the others, but I have lots of pens and I'm quite into this. But there was a, a beginning and how did I get into the world of writing instruments? So it all started with my first fountain pen and it was this. I was uh, a little, I was very small and uh, I was at school and my parents gave me this pen. You see, this has a cream color with these very, let me put some shadow here from the lights. And it gives, it has this cream color and these blue dots. And it has there a P, which makes sense because I'm Paulo. So, um, I think this was the reason my parents gave this pen to me uh, when I went to the fifth grade. Um, this is uh, when, when in Portugal the, uh, the students, when they gave this big step to the fifth grade, they usually had some. They, they stopped writing with pencils and they started writing with fountain pens. Uh, but that was a long ago, not in my time, it's not a tradition anymore, but people still gave fountain pens and I received this one. This is a Stipen, I don't know if it says Stipen or Stipen, it is a, a French brand that is now out of business. These pens are really cheap, the nib has no iridium point or hard material point, it's just a squeezed and folded nib, but it works really well, and it worked well. And so, um, let me put it here. Uh, this pen is very inexpensive, and it was when they were sold, yeah, but they wrote, they wrote really well, and uh, I really, I clearly remember of using a, a large uh, turquoise cartridges that match the color of these little spots. So, um, but I thought that this pen was a little girlish and when the, one day I was offered a more manly pen from the 80s and this is it, the clip is broke long time ago, or I broke the clip and it has these very 80s kind of look with the lizards and some crazy patterns. This pen is also a Sti pen from the same brand as the other one and I chewed the pen and I broke the clip as you can see and the nib is the same. So really a nice pen, the, the, the barrel is cracked somewhere here, uh, there I think you can see, but this means that this pen was much more used than the other one, because I like this one better. Um, and so uh, these were my two first pens. Then I remember one day I, I, I received uh, some Parker Vectors 
And one of those that made me start doing some things with fountain pens was this one. And this was part of a calligraphy kit. I need to clean this one because I don't know for many years it is it has been with dried ink in it. And they have these extra nibs. And this was a way that I would I started trying some other things with fountain pens like calligraphy, but I'm not an expert or, and I don't have any talent for that. But I remember that this made me uh, use more fountain pens and I have, uh, it made me enjoy them much more. But the most remarkable step on the, the fountain pens world was when I saved my money and I first bought my first fountain pen with my own money. It was when I was in the 8th or 9th uh, grade, I think I was uh, around 13 years old, and this pen seemed to have a nice price and I bought it. So this pen is from a brand that I'm not really sure if it's still in business or not, or is somewhere in between, but they have some technical difficulties or financial difficulties. And this brand is Inox Chrome, and this is a cartridge converter pen also. And um, I bought this, this was the first pen I bought with my own money. You can see there Inox Chrome Iridium with a globe and this funny thing that it has the, the breather hole but with no hole, just engraved. And I enjoyed this pen a lot and the color and I wrote a lot with that. I think I had smaller hands by that time. So I enjoyed so much this rather thin pen. And uh, at least this was one of the few pens that I could afford at the time. Um, and, and I wrote a lot, uh, really, really a lot in school and out of school because I always uh, liked to, to write. Um, and uh, then uh, my parents uh, fed my addiction to fountain pens and they presented some pens over the times, over the years and this is one of those, this is a Parker Vector but this one is uh, made of metal with a matte finish and the matte finish already is wearing off in some places and I wrote quite a lot with this one but I'm not a huge fan of Parker Vectors, I don't find them that exciting but they gave me another pen that I remember, this one, and this is a, a Waterman Reflex, and this pen writes really, really well, and it, it is a it is a very nice pen, and I like the the, the shape of the nib, sorry, the shape of the nib, the way it writes, the size, and even this marble green color. So I was really happy and they even gave me another pen and this is like a kit pen, it has no brand on it, but this pen is made of wood and metal and I used this pen so much uh, during college that the cap no longer stays on place. Okay, I, I know I can change these or I can change the, the section to make it work again. Even the threads on the barrel are completely the barrel is already starting eating the, the part of the section. But I used this pen so much, so much in my university. I think it was the pen I used the most. And now, here it is. I'm, I could replace the section, but I think I will keep it like this. This is a reminder of a pen that I used a lot. And, um, but, uh, suddenly the I think my relation with fountain pens changed when my grandfather gave me an old pen that he had. It is a Crest pen. I don't know anything about the brand. If you do, please tell me. And this was my way in into vintage or older fountain pens. You can see it says there Crest. It has this Parker 75 look, but it is made of aluminum, not silver. And my grandfather gave me this pen and I thought it was amazing because it had something that I don't really like that much which is a hooded nib 
and I used this pen also a lot and uh, I used it so much that one day the nib just broke one of the times I may one day try to replace but I don't know if I can remove the section without cracking it so it's still like this waiting for a better day when I have the courage to try it but it's, it was a very nice because I started looking at fountain pen in a different way and um, when this broke I remember I went to buy another fountain pen I think it was my second fountain pen that I bought from with my own money and it was this pen and this is a Parker Frontier which is a model that I really like and uh, I think this was the, the real trigger to buying more fountain pens and to starting collecting because I thought the, the Parker Frontier was such a good pen that some years later I started collecting all the different finish they have I think this is gorgeous because it is black with a black cap and even with a black nib and I like to write with black ink so it made all the sense to me and I bought this pen and I, I wrote a lot with this but I, I had that little thing that made me start buying more pens if I could afford it because I was still in college and I don't have any extra money and there is a pen that I bought because I believed it would be my definitive uh, fountain pen I would use this pen forever I believed but and it is this one this is a Parker 45 flighter version I bought this new it was used a lot so there is a little color difference I don't know if you can see it here on the back of the barrel for because of posting it has a steel nib but it is a very nice nib a very nice nib although it has some characteristic which is strange or it's strange I like it so much it has it is a, uh, an M nib but the sweet spot of this pen is so small that you really have to write with the pen in the perfect position otherwise it will start skipping but when you hit that sweet spot it's really really great pen to write with and I think I still believe this pen is one of the best pens ever made I think if I had to name a perfect pen in terms of um, price versus size versus reliability and uh, everything else I would say this is the one not in terms of luxury or extra size or anything like that but I love this pen and I like to use this pen a lot and I stick with this pen with two of my favorite things that are discontinued now which were the Penman Parker Penman Mocha and the Parker Quink Brown um, and I loved these and I wrote I really wrote a lot these were my early years uh, before and during the university I really loved this but um, things were about to change and there was an, an unfortunate event that made me uh, take a step uh, further on fountain pens love and collection so if you want to see it please come back or see it or hear it and see the pens that are associated with it please come back for the next video where I will talk about what changed and which pens came into my possession so I hope you liked it please don't forget to subscribe and see you next video bye